Welcome back to All Things Money. I'm David Blaine, and during this segment, we're going to answer a couple of viewer's email. Uh, the first question comes from Joseph at Havelock. He emailed us a question. There are a lot of infomercials on television about investing in foreclosed properties, uh, but you have to purchase a system often for quite a lot of money. Do you have any general suggestions about buying foreclosed properties? And that's a great question. Uh, we have a lot of experience at our firm investing in real estate. And my first answer is if you don't know what you're doing, don't do it. Uh, the days of, of being able to go out and buy a, a cheap property, slap a coat of paint on it, and, and sell it a week later and, and make $20,000 are over. Um, there are some great opportunities in foreclosed properties. Um, I personally, when it comes to investing in real estate, there's only one thing that matters, and that is uh, cash flow. If you're buying a property, uh, hoping to fix it up and, and flip it or sell it in a, you know, a relatively short amount of time, that is not investing in real estate. That is more of a, a business um, that's more of speculation, where you're in the business of buying, rehabbing, and turn around, uh, turning around properties. For me, investing in real estate is buying a piece of property that produces cash flow on a regular and consistent basis. Uh, other than that, it's more of a business. There's nothing wrong with business or speculating. It's just to make sure, first of all, are you going to go into business buying and selling homes? Are you going to speculate in real estate and hope to buy it and just sell it for a higher price in a few months? Or are you investing in real estate for the rental income? And so each one of those scenarios takes a little bit different uh, flavor. When investing for income, there's certainly some good deals out there. I do not like to uh, invest in single family residences as rental properties. Uh, you have one tenant, you have one property, your rental income is totally dependent on that one thing. I prefer to move into uh, duplexes, quadruplexes, and if you have the money, small apartment uh, buildings. The same thing with commercial. Um, we like to see a mix of um, different types of businesses that may use the commercial property. Once again, the same thing. If you can only afford one property, you're probably better off in the public markets just investing in a REIT or, or something along those lines. So anyway, the, the point is that uh, there are some good deals out there in foreclosed properties, um, but it's still, there's a reason that the prices are so cheap and there are a lot of professional investors out there that are looking for properties and buying properties. And so if the one you're looking at is still available, the first question you should ask is why is it still available and why has no one else purchased it already? But there are some good deals. And if you can find them, uh, it is a good opportunity to make some money. So the next question we have, a, a viewer in Taberna asks, I'm thinking about starting my own company, but I'm not sure if I should create a corporation or LLC what would you recommend? Well, that question uh, in itself would take, um, you know, an entire, it could be an entire year's worth of shows. It's a very complicated question, but we'll start um, answering it very simply. First of all, um, in the eyes of the state, uh, there are several different business entities. There are limited liability companies, there are regular corporations, and there are partnerships. We don't advocate partnerships at all, so we're going to stick with the main two companies, a limited liability company or a regular corporation. And you set that up with the state. Now, when it comes to taxation, uh, that's a different question. An LLC, uh, most people don't realize, can be taxed as a partnership. It can be taxed as a or as a corporation. Uh, corporations can be taxed in two ways, either under subchapter C of the IRS code, which is sort of a normal way to, to tax a corporation, or a subchapter S, which converts the corporation into a pass-through entity. So an LLC can be taxed as a partnership, a subchapter C, or a subchapter S corporation. And I don't want to bore you with a lot of the details of how this works, um, but suffice to say there are different choices and in different situations, one or the other type company may, may make a difference. Uh, the important thing to remember, in the eyes of the state, there's only LLCs and corporations. A C corporation or an S corporation has nothing to do with the legal structure of your company. That is a tax designation. And so uh, Coca-Cola 
or you know the local dry cleaner they both may be corporations and have the same rights and privileges under the eyes of the law but according to the IRS they may be taxed differently depending on how the owner elected to be taxed and so that's really what I want to focus on tonight is not what type of entity to pick but just to throw something out there that a lot of people don't realize is available to them uh, the LLC is a very powerful uh, business entity for tax planning to use, as well as the Subchapter S Corporation. As the tax laws are changing, and the Obama administration just announced probably going to increase taxes on higher earning taxpayers, the C Corporation, I would encourage you to take a look at it again. Several years ago, one of our favorite planning techniques was to split income between a C Corporation and some other type of corporation or LLC. And the reason is, is a C corporation pays its own taxes. Uh, whereas an LLC taxes a partnership and a subchapter S corporation, the income flows through to the owner's 1040, their personal tax return. And so if you make uh, $500,000 in your company, it shows up on your personal re tax return and you have to pay tax on that. With a C corporation, you have the opportunity to have some of your income taxed at a lower rate. So, for example, on the first uh, $50,000 of income in a corporation, it's taxed at 15%. On the next $25,000, it's taxed at 25%. And so, what you see is an individual, uh, a married individual uh, who is in taxable income of up to $200,000 is in the 28% tax bracket. And so you can see that by taking your income and splitting it into two pieces, some of it taxed at the lower corporate rate and some of it taxed at the personal rate, you can lower your overall tax bill. And one of the other strategies with a C Corp that I just love is a C Corporation, unlike a person or LLC, can have a different year end meaning your year-end can end in June instead of December. And what this allows you to do is shift income forward into the future. Uh, so if you have income in one business and you need to reduce that income, you can pay a, some sort of a management fee or something to the C Corporation, and their taxes are not due until June. And so it allows you to postpone the payment of that income tax. So that's a pretty sophisticated strategy. We might get into that a little bit more on a later show, but that's all the time that we have to, for tonight. So as a reminder, our email is allthingsmoney at dlblaine.com. Our phone number is 633-0107. Thanks for listening, and for All Things Money, this is David Blaine. The proceeding was a paid program. The opinions expressed are not necessarily those of WNBU and Interbanks Media.